Okay, so I'm here to talk about, you know, what the new light experience is in 2023. And also, hey, if you haven't checked out my Twitch yet, I stream basically every single day and you should come and check me out. It's always a bunch of fun and, you know, I'm doing carries and I've gone one whole person flawless. Hmm? What about that one? Anyway, but besides the point, so basically, I decided to make a new alt account and I wanted to see what the new light experience was after Lightfall. Because every single year, they like to change it up a little bit, even for the better or for the worst. And this is where, you know, red flag number one comes in. Guardian ranks. Now, I know they gave us every single mod that we can get for free, basically. You don't have to actually, like, grind for them, so it gives you less things to do. But, you make... You have to make sure you're Guardian rank 5 to even be able to equip any. Which means you need to do a bunch of nonsense so you can just equip, you know, a recovery mod, which everyone had unlocked at base point back in the day. So they've given us that option, which I don't really think is a good change. Most of the things they've done isn't really good changes. My current Guardian rank on my alt account is Guardian rank 4. I refuse to get it to rank 5 because, you know, the lower the cooler. And... Like I said, Guardian ranks unlock a bunch of stuff like Competitive Destiny 2, Trials of Osiris, and Iron Banner. Yeah, you can't play Iron Banner unless you're like Guardian rank 4, I'm pretty sure. And I was shocked by this fact. I was like, there's just no way. I guess it gives them a slight barrier for, you know, people to get to Guardian rank 4. But it's not really hard. It's just a waste of time. And personally, I don't really think it introduces... PvP people really well into PvP. I played competitive before I played control because I wanted the sniper and I got the god roll on my first drop like every single new light account gets for some fucking weird reason. And you know, so far I've been having pretty fun but the only problem is every single game I matched to my promotion or my rank up or you know, getting my rank was uh, against cheaters. Every single game. Every single game. I've already made a video on it but all my rank up games were, or my, um, all my games for my rank was, um, cheaters. Net limiters, soft cheaters, you know, closet cheaters, whatever it was, every single one. I matched them nine times in a row, different people, but all of them were cheating. They, for, of some sort. There was, we matched the same team who was net limiting four times in a row, then we matched people who were using aimbot three times in a row, and then we matched some other nonsense. And it's, it's just wild how that's the only people we kept matching. And for a new Light Guardian, kept matching people who had a, Adapt, Ascendant. Almost every single person we played against was Ascendant. And that was just wild. I don't know how, that you know, that makes sense. And the f highest rank you can rank on your first rank is Gold 3, which I got. And I lost every single game. I got Gold 3 and I lost every single game. So I don't know how they base your rank, but... I, I won, I lost every single one. I played like garbage because, you know, we couldn't literally do anything. And I still got placed gold 3, which is the highest I can get. Now, if you go, if you get ranked the season after, you will get placed plat 3, which is the highest you can get at the moment. And, you know, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think Bungie should give us more incentive to actually play comp. Like, a sniper from every, you know, 7 games or a sniper from every 3 wins or something like that. I think it would encourage people to play comp more if they're after the weapon that the competitive pool has to offer. Sadly, it doesn't. But, let me go back to the new LED experience. You do a useless intro that teaches you nothing about the game. You get a free tractor can now, apparently. They changed up some of the weapons you get from Savala's office, whatever, whatever. It literally doesn't matter because everything you get is garbage. And then, whenever you finish that and log back out, you're gonna get forced into one mission, which is a seasonal mission, and then when you log back in, you get forced into the lightfall mission and for a new light player that would be really confusing because you log out and then you log on the next day and you're suddenly going to neomuna for no reason whatsoever and i think it's really like off-putting and puts you really off track really fast for what you're supposed to do because even though you're in the middle of the new light quest you will still just get sent into it and for someone who has never played the game before, I think it would just be really, really weird. Because then they don't know how to actually access the mission to begin with, and then th there's just more confusion led down that path. And getting exotics at the moment is not really the most enjoyable part, because if you're not at 1800 or the capability of doing 
law sectors, you're gonna have a really bad time. And on top of that, if you're a new player, you're gonna have to wait for the weekly or the daily rotation for the, you know, the armor piece you're looking for. So you don't know what any exotic does, you have to investigate that yourself, you have to wait for Zer to come around, if you can pick up something cool from him. The gunsmith sells a bunch of weapons every single day, and if you have never played the game before, you, will n you won't have the access to the Aikilos SMG, the Mida Mini Tool, Alstringer, Beloved, all those weapons, you have to wait for the gunsmith to sell them. And I don't think the gunsmith has sold the Beloved yet, Callus Mini Tool, or the Aikilos SMG this season. Yes, he keeps selling the same weapons over and over, he keeps refreshing between like three different weapons, which I think is pretty dumb. What I think Bungie should do is, uh, you know, give... I saw Hinrit talk about this the other day, where if you do law sector patrols and like world activities, you should be able to get world drop weapons, and it should give you an incentive to actually do them, because then suddenly it gives you something to farm for. And more of some stupid shit, if you actually want to get all the subclass and all that, so much fucking glimmer. So much unbelievable glimmer if you want to unlock all the fragments, all the aspects, all the abilities, all the grenades. It's like 10 million, I don't even know the number and it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Every single fragment costs 25,000 glimmer, which is way too expensive. Way too expensive for a new light account. And especially with the fact that your glimmer is kept at 250,000 glimmer. You can have more legendary shards than glimmer. I don't know, I think that's a little bit baffling, but... They should, please, Bungie, just remove the Glimmer cap, I beg you. You're adding so much things that cost so much Glimmer, and then you cap our Glimmer, so it just becomes a painful process to acquire things. Now, if you played beforehand, you're gonna be like me and have stocked up like 10 million Glimmer, so you're never gonna run out. Yeah, I will basically never run out of Glimmer, even if I wanted to. I have like 3,000 Raid Banners, I have like 45,000 Legendary Shards, I have over 10 million glimmer in my vault, and nothing is running out. Even if I spend more than I gain, it doesn't really go down whatsoever. Because when you reach a certain point, you just play PvP, delete everything you get, and you just increase your stocks, but nothing changes. And it only really punishes the people who you know are new to the game, in all reality of it. Because if you, let's say, go into Trials, want to play Trials, you focus your card, you keep focusing for the adept weapon or focusing weapons from the vendors, you're just not gonna have enough material to do so over and over and over and over and over again. It's just, <coughs> you just don't have enough sources to get all these materials from. And then on top of that, you're capped on everything. I know they're increasing the prism cap, the sun alloy and sun and shard cap from 10 to 30, and then prism from 50 to 100. So instead of having, you know, 40 of each material, you can now have up to 120 of Ascendant Shards and Alloys and 400 Prisms. I think it's a good thing, but I think it's so irrelevant. They should just unlimit the cap. Because I hate the fact that I have to use my Postmaster to store everything. It's just really annoying. And I can, we can just go back to like um, the New Light stories. Because let's go back to when they first introduced New Light beyond Shadow Keep. You got introduced to this mighty Gaul who was invading Earth. You lost all your powers. Everything was destroyed and lost. You went through an emotional roller coaster if you never played the game before. Now you just get sent into some random mission that you have no fucking clue what's going on. They don't give you any introduction to any characters. And, you know, if you're going to compare the story currently to the New Light story that we used to have, it would te go take you through... The whole story of the game from when Gaul invaded to when you fr first found the pyramids on the moon. And I'm going to be completely honest. I think the only reason that was the case is because Activision was holding Bungie's hand. And telling them how to market, you know, the game for new players better than what, you know, it is right now. You had Forges, Menagerie, you had so many different activities that you could play through for free. Zero money. You could do all this for free. And now you have to basically pay for it to even play the game. The game can't even be called free to play anymore. When Shadowkeep first came out, I could say with confidence, yeah, Destiny 2 can be enjoyed free to play. Of course, there is DLCs and expansions that's going to make the game a lot more enjoyable, give you a lot more variety and stuff like that. But now, 
you can't even access almost any raid. Of course, you are allowed to do Vault of Glass and Kingsfall for free if you link a phone number or make a purchase. So, it's either you link your Bungie ID, your phone number to your Bungie ID or you not, you know, you have to buy something. And if you buy something, you can choose between like the 30th anniversary, Forsaken Pack, Shadow Keep, Beyond Light, Lightfall and Witch Queen. And then on top of that, you have two separate dungeon keys. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I think it equivalents to like 200 bucks and right now, which doesn't sound too bad, but I think that was on sale. But yeah, there's just way too much chaos for a new light player to get introduced to. I felt like at least when you got when you when you did it back in the day, because I did this whenever they added the new light stuff. I was like, okay, I want to see how it is for a new player to get into Destiny 2 if they don't want to spend money. I did so. I managed to get through the whole game. I got myself, you know, I got myself hands on the Godrel Spare Ration, Tatara's Gaze, you know, Bite of the Fox, bunch of weapons. And by the way, getting Iron Banner stuff was unbelievably fun. You were like power capped like 500 powers under. It was so fun. But you could do GMs almost. I mean, it's the same thing. GMs hasn't really changed. If it's not a strike you own the expansion to, you can't do it. And I think that's a really dumb thing. How they lock strikes and nightfalls behind a paywall. Because in reality, who really is going to actually go out of their way to buy a strike? Who's going to go out of their way to pay for to do a nightfall? That's not why you get the DLC, to do this GM. You get the DLC to get the story and all the exotics to, you know, around it. Not the fucking strike. I can't do the current nightfall this week because I need to own the Witch Queen campaign. I think that's a little bit silly and you know not too much of change with the season pass and the seasonal activities it works kind of the same way the only difference with shadow keep was whenever you actually when actually a season ended like all the seasonal stuff got removed and i thought that was a really bad thing but everything before that stayed in the game until beyond light and that was a really really bad time getting into a new light back then was horrible it was miserable you had no clue there was no reason to stay in the game there was no guidance, there was nothing. It was, it was awful. Shadow Keep was actually a good time to get into the game for free. Or you could be the, the Chad and get into, you know, the game when it was a free trial on Battle.net, which was also an amazing time to get into the game. Of course, you had not a lot of options because you could only do year one content and you were capped your power. And it was it was a really, really confusing period. But there are good sides, and the good sides are there is introduction quests for each playlist, which has been in the game for a while. They're not too expl explanatory, but at least they, they teach you and tell you how to get into, you know, Gambit, Strikes, and Crucible. Yeah, thanks Bungie. And they do actually tell you to go into the comp playlist, even without the competitive quest. The, lo the final step for the Crucible playlist you know, the introduction is to go into competitive. I think that's cool. As long as Bungie keeps encouraging people to play comp, replace maybe Showdown with Countdown, I think that would be a great idea. Maybe even increase the players from 3 to 4. I think it would give variety to the gameplay. And I think variety is what we need right now, because right now it's everyone rock Arc Titan with Immortal, Cloud Strike, and Teus Titan whatever it might be, it's just no variety. And Tay's Words is an exotic that needs to get looked at. Not PKs, PKs are not broken. 750s are strong, PKs are not broken. But I wish Bungie could like focus a little bit more. I wish we could download all the old content from year one and be able to play it instead of having to wait for it to re-roll years in the future. Because currently that's kind of how it's gonna go. We know the story isn't coming back anytime soon or any signs of them ever adding it back at all. But raids like Leviathan, Spire, Eater, Scourge of the Past, Crown of Sorrow are eventually coming back. At least that's what they told us, but we don't even know if they've changed plans or not. I'm hoping they stick with their words and actually, you know, follow through. I, I hope they never censored any more content in the game. Seasonal activities I don't really care about because all the seasonal activities are irrelevant. The only thing I wish they did was give us a better way to get the weapons. Like the Seraph weapons, you have the Aikilo SMG, Sniper, you have the Haunted weapons, the Mita Minitool, Drang, st like 
there's just so many good weapons they've locked behind, you know, a time-gated wall for no one to know when to be able to acquire. World, like, my biggest issue right now with the fucking game is world drop weapons and unsunset weapons that you just literally can't obtain. You have Igneous Hammer, which is coming back in this season, I know. Steady Hand, which you can't obtain. Palindrome. You have all these weapons that they just said, nah, guys. I know we're not adding them to the pool, but we're not going to allow you guys to be able to focus them as uh, old weapons. They did it to Uzume, why not Palindrome? There's just a lot of things that I find a little bit dumb. But I have hope. I'm having a lot of fun streaming every single day. I've been playing on my New Light account every single day. I enjoy it. It's fun to go into comp, countdown, and shit like that, and just, you know, not care about if I win or lose, just try to enjoy the game, and it's so much more fun when I do it with you guys. So, if you guys want to come and check me out on Twitch, I do stream every day, and I will continue to try to do so. The link will be in the description, and all my other links for my Discord, if you ever want to come and talk to me, my Patreon, if you ever want to support me with, you know, money of any sort, there is... Patreon exclusive things and I will continue to update it. It's whatever and My mail if sponsors are around because I've rejected every sponsor so far um, Anyway, if you enjoyed this video if there was something I forgot to talk about let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys around. Goodbye